Hello everyone. Um, this week's sneak peek, we're actually going to go um, drawer by drawer down the racks as I clean them. And um, because our video setup isn't quite perfect for like actually showing that process, I was just going to do some basic introductions. The cleaning part's not nearly as fun anyway. Um, but uh, currently the reptile room has fewer snakes than several other rooms in the house. Two, two other rooms in the house? Eh, maybe this room has more snakes than the, the brumation um, coolers in our bedroom, but not by that many. So it should be exciting and fun, but not like super long and crazy. Um, coming up soon, we have um, upgraded sound equipment for our next video. I'm pretty excited about that. And um, this week is actually a special week for us because my husband and I are going to do like one of the first romantic getaways that we've done in the 18 years we've been married. Um, our teenagers now can be left home alone for a couple of nights and they're gonna spray the geckos and, and hold down the fort here and um, we are going to um, enjoy some time away. But it does mean that this is a crazy week because I have to squish the entire week's work into the first three days. <laughs> so it should be interesting. Um, also on Sunday we have the Show Me Reptile Show in Durham, North Carolina and we will be excited to be vending there. Um, it's a smaller show and I really like the fact that you can uh, communicate and interact a little more at that show because the crowd usually isn't as overwhelming. Uh, so uh, the first week of every month I find the time to change out all of the bedding in the snake racks. And so um, all the bedding gets dumped, they get all fresh bedding after their bin and their water dish and their other uh, accessories have been sanitized and then everything goes back in the drawer and the ball pythons all nice and clean or I mean the snake in general because we do this with with the ball pythons but we also do it with the other snakes um this girl here is a beautiful orange dream yellow belly pied and um I love her bright colors in her splotches um, she does have more white than, than I prefer. I like the ones that are a little more balanced. But um, a lot of the jeans wipe out uh, a, a decent amount of color. And then you end up with smaller amounts of, of patches. She's also uh, super friendly and has no name. That seems to be the general um, theme around here. <laughs> she, uh, I did want to name her something, I don't know, Sunshiny. Um, I thought about sunflower for a while, but uh, it never really stuck. So we'll see what happens. Um, she is, uh, of course, really pretty. And she is just up to breeder weight. So I'm hoping that if all things go well, we can pair her this year and end up with beautiful baby orange dream pies. So uh, this makes cleaning seem uh, super fast. Uh, if only it was actually that fast. So this guy here is a black pastel pied for sure and um, black pastel makes a largely white snake often with color on their head and sometimes with color on their tail just like this guy here so he may also have orange dream and um, sandblast in him but we won't actually know until he has babies that prove that out um, he does have some like Sandblast takes away some of the color in the colored area, and he does got that going on a little bit here in his tail, but it's, it's really hard to tell. So um, at the time, he and the Orange Dream Yellow Belly Pied were our most expensive snakes, and we were super excited to get them. And we've had them almost a year now, and um, he is a terrible eater, which has really made our breeding plans uh, slow way down. Normally, you would start pairing your ball pythons in October or November, and um, he just hadn't been eating well enough to do that. He's actually starting to get there now, so hopefully we can keep him eating and uh, start making pied babies, because I was definitely on the plans. <laughs> So snake number three in our rack, or bull python rack, is this beautiful girl here. So this is just a pastel visually. She is also het pied, so some of her babies, if we pair that with the male that we're planning on pairing her with, will have the white blotching. And this girl actually has a name. Her name is Lilith, and she's our biggest ball python. Um, she is a big girl. They're not always this size, but... Um, they can be bigger. <laughs> and uh, 
she is definitely a curious girl ready to go usually and uh, today seems to be no exception so another exciting thing that's happening this week is well either this week or next week we are going to be getting two packages with two brand new species and i'm really excited about that but uh this girl here is a black pastel and visually that's all she is but she's also het pied so we're, we're very excited about getting some black pastel pies and um, she just shed out so she's very extra beautiful <laughs> we don't have very many ball pythons that know what the whole be a ball thing is <laughs> This beautiful girl is a pinstripe, and you can you can see that in her pattern is very different. Um, pinstripe is a a very interesting gene that that changes things a lot, and she's also het pied, and um, she was purchased with a second pinstripe het pied, so we should have two. This one doesn't have a name, and um, she did a really good job eating for us right from the the beginning, so. Um, she didn't get as much attention as her sister. Um, her sister isn't actually uh, related, but um, yeah. This girl here is Gluttony. It's not my favorite name, but um, it does have a story. So um, for the first several months that she lived here, she would not eat. She had eaten live rats at her last home and she did not want to switch over to frozen thawed. And my husband started making fun of her and calling her gluttony. And he's all like, it's going to get her to eat. It's going to get her to eat. And then it did. Like the second week that he was doing it, she started eating for us. And she was a Mr. Meal sense. Um, she did have a bad shed with us this time. So um, she was just taking a bath. And um, unfortunately, that happens sometimes. This is Naga, and Naga's actually been on video a few times now. So even though she's almost 13 years old, or she might be 13 now, I'm eh, probably getting pretty close, um, she is our most shy ball python um, that we have had for a while. Um, obviously, we picked up a new Banana Orange Dream piebald at the end of January, and um, then last month we got... 19 ball pythons in a uh, a small breeder buyout so there are actually 20 ball pythons in um the rep or in the quarantine space which is my husband's office <laughs> and that we actually only have eight ball pythons in this room so it's kind of funny um but nag is pretty shy to begin with and then um she was pushing at my hand so she could peek. So she does uh, warm up and is a, is is a sweetheart. She's just a little a little nervous at first. So she's uh, one of the best ball pythons we have because she does ball up pretty pretty intensely. Um, she is a cinnamon pastel, which is also called a pewter, and um, we're excited to see what we can do with that to. Um, make some pretty babies. The eighth ball python in this room is Charlotte and she is a orange dream pastel spider or a orange dream bumblebee. Um, bumblebee is just a fancy way of saying uh, pastel spider and um, she's very friendly and very inquisitive and on the move today. So she definitely uh, has interest in going going places. Now that we're through the eight ball pythons that currently are here in the reptile room, we are going to start on the colubrids. Um, we're also shy on other snakes because um, we have a bunch in brumation and they'll be coming out in just a couple weeks, which is another exciting thing that's happening here. So this is Dorothy and Dorothy's been on video before and she is a scaleless tessera or tessera uh, corn snake and uh, she's super friendly. She's actually been to shows and got handled by a bunch of people. Um, so yeah, there's Dorothy. <laughs> Next up is Coral and Coral is a Coral uh, Snow Tessera. 
And uh, she's actually a very lovely shade of pink. I really feel like the camera doesn't do her justice. It doesn't help that she's uh, always on the move. She is definitely a corn snake, and uh, she likes to, to move around a lot and explore. Let's see if we can get her little head in there. So, uh, as you can see, everybody who's here in the reptile room currently is little. And um, that's because all of the bigger snakes are in formation. This is Martha, and Martha is an anaconda um, hognose snake. She's a western or plains hognose snake. And um, she was actually one of my first snakes. I got her and George together. And um, they were super duper tiny. But she didn't grow as much as she should have this past year because she went on a hunger strike and didn't eat for four or five months. It was crazy and nerve wracking. But uh, she's absolutely adorable. She wouldn't have been ready to breed anyway, but she would have been bigger. <laughs> this is George and George is an albino anaconda, Western hognose or plains hognose. He is um, very friendly and uh, a little bit silly. He does not hold on very well at all, so he has just fallen off of people before. So um, that makes watching him a little more important. <laughs> and uh, he um, is almost a year old now, so um, he could be ready to breed next year. I don't know if I'll have any girls for him or not. Hognose snakes are pretty expensive compared to some of the other species. <laughs> But he's a delight. This is Cheddar Bob. And Cheddar Bob is actually the first snake that was named through uh, our Help Us Name Our Snake videos. And um, he is a albino Kenyan red African house snake. And he is uh, quite a sweetheart and beautiful. I, uh, these were my first house snakes. So that, uh, I've got a pair. And um, I've definitely been loving them. Um, even though they're so little, I think uh, snakes are easier and more fun to hold when they get a little bigger. And I'm, I'm positive that the African house snakes will be in that, in that category. Um, they have a lot of different great features, including the fact that they don't get huge, but they will get a little bigger than, well, a lot bigger than this. And, um, hopefully this pair will be moms and a mom and a dad in the future. Um, so cheddar bob. I am definitely realizing that uh, in the future I'm going to have to break up uh, who gets cleaned when so that it's not all of the snakes on one day. Um, I'm almost done. We've got a handful more left. Um, but uh, if we were also doing everybody who's in formation and everybody who's in the quarantine room, it would be so many snakes. So this is Cheddar Bob's girlfriend. She doesn't have a name yet. But she is also an albino Kenyan red African house snake. She doesn't have as much pattern as he does, and she's not as red. So I was talking to a uh, house snake breeder who um, has quite a collection, much, much larger than I'll probably ever have. But uh, he was telling me that the females just don't seem to be as red in the Kenyan reds. And so um, he's been line breeding his to try to get them redder. But uh, we'll see what happens with this pair. Um, they're definitely beautiful either way. And she's also a sweetheart. I think that's, yeah, African house snakes are, are pretty easygoing snakes in general. Um, this is Zeus. And Zeus is a scaleless corn snake. He is het for Amel and Annery and Motley. Um, I don't have a lot of Motley going on, though, yet. So, uh... We won't be using that gene quite as much as the others. But it does mean that he can help uh, when he's big enough, which he didn't quite make this past year. But he'll help us make uh, snakes in, in four different colors, which is exciting. He is also, so um, he carries the scaleless gene, and most of him is nice and smooth and scaleless. But he has several rows of scales down his back which is interesting. Um, he has the most scales of any of my scaleless corn snakes. Um, he's also a sweetheart. I think that's mostly the general consensus on most of our snakes. 
some of them are a little nervous, but um, yeah, generally we have we have a really good bunch here. Uh, though I would love them even if they were more cantankerous or more nervous. So I guess it all works out. <laughs> now we're to the holdbacks. So we're down to just four snakes left. And I actually think we'll probably have to release uh, one of these based on the fact that I think it's a boy and I think we have two boys and two girls and we don't want to end up with too many boys in our program. But anyway, this one here is a beautiful shade of orange and it does look like it has motley down the, the back, which is these little circles, but it does have checkers on its belly. So it's not a motley, but it's interesting pattern made me want to keep him. And um, they just moved out of the baby rack and into the big boy and girl snake rack. So um, it does have him acting a little more extra nervous Although this snake has displayed some nervous behavior, particularly around the camera before, so it's not that that unusual. But a beautiful uh, scaleless corn snake, and um, we'll either keep him or find him a great new home. Um, after I'm sure that he's actually a boy, I, I have to double check on that one. This beautiful scaleless corn snake is Persephone, as long as I'm correct that it's a girl. I am brand new at determining that and feel unconfident, but um, she's still looking really girl, so I'm going to guess that I'm probably right. And she has a gorgeous, just an absolutely gorgeous pattern. So her mom was a Miami het scaleless, and her dad was a scaleless, or is a scaleless, I guess is, is, is the proper term. Um, and um, Persephone ended up with these really thick, um, almost okati saddle borders and uh, just, just really unique and beautiful coloration. I'm excited to watch her as she grows. They were hatched out in August, so um, they're, what, eight months old now? So uh, this one almost has an annuary coloration, and I'm wondering if that's the Miami uh, from his, his mom, and I think this one might be a boy too, which might be why we might have to get rid of either this one or the one that's got the the motley swirls. Um, in any case, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful snake. And our final hold back here was this, uh, this one here who has the grayish colored um who's about to shed i missed that so it has the grayish colored background and it also has those almost motley circles on them but also has the checkered belly so isn't a motley um so it's really interesting and um we'll see who actually gets to stay um, I'd love to keep all four of them, but I think that we're actually going to have to pick because we only have so much space and we have a lot of cool jeans coming up that we want to work with. So, um, yeah, we'll have to, there might be a couple more of last year's, uh, one or two more of last year's babies being sold this year. We'll see. If you've made it this far, I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that you uh, take the moment to subscribe, to like this video, leave a comment. I love all of those things. I thought I'd end our uh, snake introduction video with a gecko because who can forget that we have a bunch of amazing geckos in here. So this girl here, it, her name is Ivory and she is a um, quad stripe. So she's got the stripe that comes down here along her back as well as the double pinstripe and she also I think has a gene called fringe which makes it so that her pinstripe scales are really big and they they're almost fringe like and um, her and Spike have produced some really amazing babies that are coming up that are really exciting um, she's a good girl but uh and a crested gecko in case you didn't know <laughs> 
Crested geckos are definitely jumpy. Um, I had a nine-year-old tell me, though, that they're the best because they're a very interactive pet, um, which can mean that you're chasing them more often than you would like. Um, she's even a calm crested gecko, so <laughs> it can get really crazy. Uh, so uh, I hope you watch some more cool critter content. I've got some amazing educational information coming up in the next few weeks. Um, there's a whole list of videos I'll be working on making and um, I'll be doing the vlog style or introduction style videos uh, once a week. So I hope you come back and I'd love it if you watched these cool critter content videos that are right here right now.